turn your mic on. Okay, and welcome to StarCraft. My name is Josh Hughes. I am the I am the Amherst coach for esports, and we have some StarCraft action for you guys today. We have first off from Pender. We have Pen we have Sardif Games. He is the number one seed, record being. Um, let me look it up here on the season. He is 14 and one. He will be versing the number four seed from Scribner Snyder, um, Go Snakey, whose record is five and six. And so as soon as I receive the word, we will begin. Are we good to get, okay? As soon as I receive the word, we will begin. And Thank you for joining us here on the official NISA channel for this game. Starting in 30 seconds. And I don't have a stopwatch or a clock or anything. I found a I found a clock, so we'll wait another five seconds, and here we go. We will be starting in three, two, one, go. Okay, both. This is this is one v one. Both players. Um, I'll di I'll be discussing how this game works along with both players this is a side-by-side -side map is what we call this so so players are going to start across from each other okay this would be snaky from from Scribner Snyder there is the good luck have fun GLHF in the chat that is the politest way to start the match and Sardeth over here will be playing Protoss okay we can see minerals here. Supply is how many guys you have, or how many harvesters you have. Oh, I can't zoom out either. Oh, looks like Sardeth is going to go ahead and put a pylon down. This thing, the this thing with Protoss, which is supposed to be like an alien race. Um, um, this is the pylon sets up. It'll power your buildings along with giving you more supply. As you see, his supply has gone up from 15 to 23. Ghost Snakey also running Protoss, looking at a very similar build. They're using their pylon and a gateway, gonna wall off the ramp. Let me see, can we move? There we go. Okay, being the main base right now at the beginning, what you're trying to do is you are trying to gain minerals. It will probably expand down here. This is what we refer to as the natural, okay? Sardeth Games also having the natural and going here on this side-by-side -side map. Each mineral patch, you can collect minerals and also gas, which is right down here. The gas being um, allows for higher tiered units. And the building phase is kind of here, just at the beginning. Um, everybody, both guys going standard builds. They're getting out there. They're getting out there. Um, Gateway, which their gateway is this thing sets up this build model. This is the standard and also has expanded to run these mineral patches as well. Looks like Sardef running the exact same build. This is your standard build for Protoss. And in 16 out of 16, he has both gases saturated. So as you can see, with his 23 workers, 21 workers, so about the same, nobody built any army here at, oh, and Snakey is going to go ahead and um, scout, he's going to go ahead, see what Sardeth is doing, this is allowed, this is allowed, he's just going to go ahead and bump around and see, 
just kind of set himself up right there and sees what he watch and spy on him. Let's take a look back over at Snakey. Over here, he has fully saturated, and he is one off from fully saturating his mineral line. Okay, running here. He's walled off here, going for a cybernetics core and a Twilight Council. Twilight Council offers other units. Um, he has built, oh, so they're building now. Okay, he's also starting this nexus, so he'll be saturating this line, try and get more minerals, trying to get more gas faster. This is the game of minerals. Oh, and he's spinning out a, uh, he's going ahead and spinning out a uh, stalker. This is range as he spits that out. So, going back over to Sardiff Games, okay? And he's going in, getting, getting more and more. Looking down, everything is fully thanked, and he also has an Adept. He's brought out an Adept to kill off the little spy that would have been sitting there. The Adept is kind of a ranged attacker, okay? Going in, going to use a drop ship. That's what that is building. Going ahead and getting a dark shrine. Going to get out of this incredible useful. Okay, speeding that one out. Okay, he has his mineral line. He's still working. Still working on getting his mineral line out. He is building, building a couple more probes. Let's take back over at Ghost Snakey. Ghost Snakey is not building probes currently, but has five. It's all the way down. Also, we're going, going the. Let's see, not a gateway. That's a gateway. Oh, it's completed. And going the Dark Shrine. The Dark Shrine giving you Dark Templar being invisible units. What is the building now? Looks like it's warping in. Okay, and this is an invisible unit. Looks like he is bringing some stuff out, sitting him out here. This one is not. Oh, he's going to go out. Go sneaky, taking the aggression. Going going through the middle with these invisible units. We can see them in spectator mode, but Sardith will not unless he has a unit that can spot out. Unless he has a unit that can spot out. And I don't see one that he has. I don't I don't know if he has a spotter unit. So we will, oh, what, he's going back. He's going back. And I don't know why he is going back. And he should be, oh, he's oh, he got some protection. It's like he's starting to go ahead and he wants to die in. So his fifth movement, Jordan's fifth movement, went in and he's going to face the blue snake. Blue snake. The thing is, though, this can't see each other. Held, staved off the attack, taking some severe damage. These buildings being unpowered currently now, and he's going to go ahead and push. Going to go ahead and push. Looks like Sardis going to bring bring that across. Oh, they're going to run past each other in the night. They did not zero. They did not use the attack move. Okay, and this is this is the this is the ship that is dropped. We'll see if Sardis is going to bring more guys out as Ghost State goes ahead and goes in. Oh, and he, he units are stuck attacking. Oh, there he goes. There he goes. And Sardis is now in trouble because he has here he has some observers. Here he has the observers that will go ahead and spot the unit. The dark Templar is what they are called. Well, he's gonna go in try to do some damage fast against the dark Templar. So with these flying units, they can spot them. Single stalker is and Sardes concedes, and Snakey takes game one. Let's check out the score screen. Let's check out the score screen. Sardes dropping game one.
in performance, unspent resources score, supply and control. Can I put it down? To here? Right there. Okay, this one's good? Okay. Okay, thank you for double checking that. And we had Sardis was was in the was in the lead. They were equal in tech. Sardis had a little more as far as in as far as the in game score. So we will go play. Okay. Blackburn again. Okay. I will send the invites. I will go ahead and go set it to 25. Game speed faster. We are in Blackburn again. We will invite Sardeth. And we will send invite for Snakey. Snakey taking game one in that. And in this Protoss versus Protoss match, we will start in with game two of this best of three series with Snakey with, let me look up his, it says Snakey on here, but from his his real name is Colton Berklin from Scribner Snyder taking game one, Ghost Snakey versus Sardiff game, which is, which is Isaac Butts from Pender High School. We'll see if they can come back and complete this game two the same map was picked side by side. So again, starting this out, this this map. If I go ahead and if I go ahead and look, let's see what is Ghost Snake. Oh my! I can only see Snakey now. Oh, there we go. Okay, or Sardef. This is Sardef Games over here. We have Ghost Snakey over here. They have switched sides. Um, not really sure on this mod what I can show and not show. So I will do my best to explain. This building is is put, dropping gas, doing doing everything, so on and so forth. This map, though, if you go all the way up to the top, these yellow minerals here, these things are actually worth the extra if you want to be really aggressive and take them both of them again playing standard playing standard 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 opening of the gateway standard opening of pylon into gateway which is which again for for protoss both of them doing it sardeth doing it out here on the larger ramp with ghost snakey walling off the smaller ramp as you can see here walling off the smaller ramp on 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 his whereas this is where he's doing it Ghost Snakey is doing it here. Sardeth is going ahead. Oh my goodness. Okay. Sardeth going ahead and doing it out here, which for Ghost Snakey would be out here. So, so going, going on this map is side by side. So they're building up and across. These things here in 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 the middle, these are just an inhibitor zone. Uh, basically, units walk through, walk or fly through here slower. Go Snakey, bringing out the scout. Bringing out the scout. Scouting again, which which here at NSESA, we, for StarCraft, we don't allow army units to cross the map or buildings to go across the map. Um, we don't allow it um, pre four minutes. There is a four minute build time, and there's a reason for that. There's a reason for that. It it prevents just we call them cheese build, but Ghost Snakey going going ahead and seeing. He's seen all of this now, so he knows that Sardeth again is not going anything silly. He's not going anything crazy. Just going just a standard build, bringing out a forge here. So start working on upgrades. Sardeth also bringing out the Twilight Council. So looks like the same build as before. Ghost Snakey has started his while while Sardeth has has went ahead and has his expansion completed. So he is mining from two bases. Now we've got perfect saturation here. 16 on the mineral line. Three workers on this gas. Three workers on this gas. Looking over Ghost Snakey. 15 out of 16. 
So almost perfect saturation here, but it's still trying to drop in his Nexus, which is just now completed. Although he's running, he's, he's running it still. He does have his robotics, not building anything out of that yet, and then working on his Dark Shrine for Dark Templar, those invisible units that we had earlier. With Sardeth going ahead, and it looks like Sardeth is also gateway. Ga oh, Sardeth is also going a photon cannon. This cannon is also, you can see, warp gates now, just finishing for both of them. So we'll get to watch a cool little animation when the warp gate complete. These things open up, and you can s and you can um, summon army units a lot quicker with warp gate. Looks like Sardet's going to go ahead and drop his second gas. His photon cannon is complete, and Biff he's going to warp in stalker unit along with his adept. A little standard of what he did before, warping in another pylon. And Snakey with, this is an observer unit. This, uh, this unit flies, it does not attack. As you can tell, this observer is invisible, but it can see a long ways out and warping in Dark Templar. Just one, just one Dark Templar, and he's gonna send it. Go Snakey, being the aggressor, gonna send it, gonna send this single unit up for ass. Here comes another one. And along with an observer, now this observer is invisible. So the observers can actually see each other. We will see if Sardeth has any type of ones in. Oh, they, he, Sardeth has his own. And so they are, he has his own observer full of stalkers. No sneaking past this. No sneaking past this small little army here. So very well played. They have observers, so they have vision. So these guys. They deal a lot of damage, the Dark Templar, but they are, they do not have a lot of hit points. They do not have a lot of shields, and it looks like Sardeth is going to complete Blink. Blink is a Stalker special ability. So, this is the Blink Stalkers here, and Sardeth way ahead in supply. He is supply blocked at 62 out of 62, so I hope he is building in some... He's not. He is hard stuck at 62 out of 62. He needs to be warping in some more pylons, um, so he can up, so he can up that. Finally, finally building a pylon and expanding to a third. Go Snakey, going to go ahead and bring out a few more guys. Being the aggressor, we will see. Okay, along with some zealots. Zealots go ahead and they do melee attack. He's going to group them up. Nope, he's not going to group them up. He's going to go ahead, and we'll see. And come in here, he does not know that there is a, th oh, he is, he sees them. He sees the probes going up, and nope, nope. It looks like he's gonna go ahead and try to break through here. He's gonna go ahead, and Sardeth will hold him off. Sardeth will hold him off, playing this one a little, a little slower. And with that victory, Sardeth is going to go ahead and push. Snakey just bringing in guys one at a time while this, while, while this unit is very strong. And then Sardeth is going to, this is just a drop ship or a warp prism. It won't actually do anything. Sardeth may be pushing, okay, going, going, going across. He's going to go ahead and put in some some photon cannons just in case as we go back across the mini map and Sardeth is going to push with these stalkers that he has stalkers are better at shooting than they are at fighting in close range but I think he has a numbers advantage as he's going to take out Ghost Sneaky warping in some more some more army units trying trying to stop the onslaught Sardeth has stopped building and so has Ghost Sneaky they have stopped building and Ghost Sneaky Go Snakey surrenders out. And so nice job by Sardeth Games coming back in game number two. Sardeth Game coming back in game number two. Let's go look at the scores at the score summary. Sardeth Sardeth Game again had the better build, built more units, built harvested more resources, built more structures, and developed a lot more tech than Snakey this time. I will go ahead and hit play again, and this game will go to a game number three. I will go ahead and make myself a spectator. Oh, 
Oh, I may have to choose a different map. I will go ahead and I will wait. Okay. Steph says she can't hear you. Really, really. Both of them do what? Glittering ashes. Glittering ashes. Okay. I need to. We will go to. We'll show you what this looks like. They both. They're choosing glittering ashes. I will create a lobby. I want to do it with a mod because you know. That's what I want to do. I I wanted to do that. Oh crud! I gotta quit this. There we go. There we go. Glittering Ashes. Create with mod. And... WCS game heart. Create. All right, here we go. Turn myself into a spectator, sending out the invites. Invites are sent. Maybe. And we will move on to game three. And let's start. Here we go. Oh, crap. <laughs> oh, well. All right, game starting in. Three, two, one. As we load in between Sardeth Games from Pender and Ghost Snakey or Snakey from Scribner Snyder. And again, this is a cross map. So we will have Sardeth Games starting in the top. This being the mini map down here, as you can see. At Sardeth Games up up in the top right corner. Snakey in the bottom left corner. Alright, as we go ahead and start it again. Single single pylon into into the gateway. Into the warp gate. Single pylon into the warp gate. This map is a little bigger, having um several ramps. Also rocks blocking some of the ramps here. You can actually attack these rocks. You can actually attack these rocks right there and make it so you can put a bigger army through with a kind of a low ground through here in the in the middle stuff that people cannot see past. And and we we go on again Protoss it's Protoss versus Protoss. Um, Protoss being an alien race, the, th the unique thing about the Protoss is that they don't just have life. Everything has the blue bar and the green bar. If you look above here, that blue bar is actually shields. The shields regenerate. The green bar is like health or hit points that does not regenerate. All structures and units have shields for the Protoss. Again, Sardis laying down his laying down his expansion along with 
along with Cybernetics Core and Gateway. We should be seeing roughly the same thing from Snakey. Okay, two pylons. Okay, building a Zealot. Very nice. And the Cybernetics Core. Okay, he's warping in the Zealot. We can, we can see there. And again, perfect saturation. Perfect saturation, no expansion yet. He's gonna go ahead and warp in a Twilight Council, this being game three. Whoever wins this, wins it all. So, peep, so, everybody frantically building. There is no scouting from Snakey on this side. For this game, we've seen it before, but they are not doing it again. So looks like Sardeth, yes, he does have so every unit, every worker unit called a probe. Every worker unit that's built here is going to go start mining and then start in on and then start delivering there. It's a, it's a very nice. You can have two workers producing. Okay. Sardeth with, again, 31 supply over Snakey's 25 currently. Not a huge lead at the moment, but a small one just in case as, as he is just cranking out the workers as fast as, as fast as he can going in with the Twilight Council. And then... Can't see what's being built. I think I have to press a certain button. And everyone's vision, play one's vision, play two's vision, two, play production. Uh, there we go. Now we can see production. Production. Unit. Okay, both of them having a single unit. Income. If you look at the income here, Sardis Game is out mining Snakey, which, which is... What is production? Production again. I have to look at this as D. Production. There we go. As we see the units being used and produced, Snakey does have his expansion. He's going to go ahead and start cranking out, cranking out units out of... He's going to start cranking out units out of this, out of this, going to make a small little wall around here. And again, going with the ever-popular... Going with the ever popular Dark Templar, these guys being invisible, this guy is not. Now, as you can look at, this is from Snakey's point of view. He cannot see up here because he has no units up there. He has he has nothing up there, and this and this poor little zealous like, hey guys, wait for me, guys, 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 why you gotta do that? Come on, guys, let me up there. These guys are like, no, we have to run in first. And looking at from this, Sardef does have a cannon for so they can spot invisible units. And here comes our little Zella. He's like, wait, guys, wait. Nope, 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 nope. And just nopes right out. Hit the E for everybody. So, so yes, if, if we look at, okay, this is all Sardef can see here. This is all Sardef can see. So his vision, he is just worried about, about, about making his stuff. Okay, Jake or Snakey, um, Snakey has seen this, but now this is frozen. So he knows this was here at one point, but he has no current vision. This is called the fog of war, which is really good. Let's go back to spectator mode. We can see both sides of what's of what's going on. Oh, Sardeth with a nice, nice little army over over here of 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 some stalkers and with an observer, so we can see them invisible units again. All right, and Snakey, or Snakey, good grief, I keep thinking Snakey Jake's. That was a pizza restaurant in Wayne State when I was there at college. It's actually pretty decent pizza, but so that's why I'm going ground uh, ground weapons now completed for Sardef Games. Um, um, and he seems to be Snakey just going, again, being, being, being aggressive. He does have his own observer. Okay, and it looks like he may have accidentally, he did, he accidentally, these units cannot get through here now. And so he has accidentally blocked off these units. And so it looks like we got a battle coming up, coming up here with Sardeth cleaning that up pretty well. He has a void ray, which, which, which can hit air. And these poor guys cannot. This guy can't even shoot back. And Sardef is pushing with that little victory. Now, the shooters, these little stalkers, they can hit air. But I don't know if it's going to be enough. Nope, they are blowing up. 
and he's going to push it with his Void Ray and Stalkers going to warp in and they're going to get to work on this wall. This guy, this, this unit, this Immortal cannot hit, but the Stalkers can and it looks like the Stalkers are trying to push forward. It looks like they're, they're just trying and they're stuck and they can't quite get there. The, the thing goes down, unpowering all of these buildings. Sneaky cannot, he cannot warp in any more guys at this location. And it looks like very good on him for not surrendering. Sardeth with his warp prism goes ahead and warps in more stalkers. Puts down, puts down another pylon to try to get these buildings up and running again. He does have a single one right back here, and that is it. Snakey, Snakey, Snakey losing two. Two out of the three. That means Sardeth will advance to the finals and Snakey will be playing for third and fourth. We will be back as soon as the other game is complete.